Hi, it's Faceless Tech. A while ago, I made this Audra Boy with a removable flash cart. Loved it, loved playing with it. Just the screen was a bit small. So then I see looking around, and a few people had been using the SSD 1309 screen, which was an, a monster 2.4 2 inch screen compared to the 0.9 inch screen I think this one is. I was like, oh wow, so I ordered one, uh, got it working, had a, bit, a few hiccups because using it with the flash chip, they both use the spy lines. I had to use some transistors. Um, I didn't have the right transistors, so I used some other different transistors. Uh, the 2N2222, my favourite transistor. So I just used that in there, got that work in, breadboarded it all up. I was happy with it, and then I kind of just like sat on it because I didn't know what form factor it was going to take. Um, I noticed that the screen was kind of sort of ish the same size as a, a Game Boy Advanced screen, so I was going to put it in the Game Boy Advanced shell. Um, but there's two things with that. One, it was going to have a quite large PCB, which is going to be expensive. And two, someone already sort of started that project so far. I'm not going to copy that. I'll go to the next best thing, which is a Game Boy Advance SP, which it kind of fits in. So let's have a look. I had to make a nice surround for the screen to sit in. Um, I basically reverse engineered the board for it. When I was using, when I did that for my um, Game Boy Color build, I actually had a Game Boy Color, took it apart. Um, measured the PCB and that, but with this one, I kind of didn't. The only one I had was um, a childhood um, Game Boy SP, and I didn't really want to take that apart because you know the golden rule is don't take apart childhood consoles because you know you will cry. So I basically used some photos offline, photos online, measured it, and then was printing them out, trying it in the case, and uh, I did an all right job, I think. Got everything kind of working. The only thing that kind of didn't work was where the post holes were and made them a little bit smaller but in the new PCB uh, layout I had uh, I've made them bigger and also I of course flipped the footprint of the uh, transistor every single time I just but luckily it's easy enough to flip back because I'm just using the SMD version um, but what, what, what also what the problem was that it's got more buttons than it needs because you only need the D-pad A and B and then a reset button these uh, start and select don't work, and the shoulder buttons don't work. They're just in the case. I was, gonna, I was debating where to put the reset button. I decided to put it in the middle with the um, normally where it's with the brightness controls. Because if you put on more than one of the start and selects, you probably, you know, you kind of guess in which one's which, and that one kind of just sits in the middle like nondescript. Um, the also thing I was worried about was how am I going to do the volume? Because with the Game of SP, it's got like a slider. And not, um, and I wanted like a mute switch. Um, so what I did basically was just put a switch behind the slider and turned it into a switch. So when you put it, when you put it up, which is turning the volume up, um, it unmutes it and then it mutes it, put it down. I thought that was quite clever myself, but uh, put a little Pico uh, piezo speaker uh, behind the speaker wheel there that kind of just fitted. And then the on and off is just literally just um, on and off switch. Got a, a battery to fit in the back, um, and then I just literally just uh, soldered the screen, uh, connected it. It's kind of just snakes behind. There's like a, a thing, a bit of a gap between there, so it kind of just snakes in, snakes down. The, the only problem I found with this was because I wanted to have uh, charging, USB-C charging. I had the only place I could find to put the charger was down here, and you could have, you probably could have got away with using it, but it's kind of not really that great access, and depending on what kind of use. Uh, USB port, USB cable you're using, depending on if you could actually charge and didn't want to depend on a Pacific cable. Um, so I just had to reroute it up here, which I did have to file down a little bit of the shell. But I don't think any of the other case uh, needs to be modified with this one. I wanted to keep it as uh, stock as possible just to make it easier. And I've just, uh, I basically had, had all the chip, chip parts, the Arduino, the charger, the um, DC boost and the flash chip are all kind of housed in there flash cart where the Game Boy cart would be so you'd have the maximum area and you wouldn't be worried about you know trying to make sure that things are the right height and stuff and then I just made a cover with a magnet in and then a magnet in the case and then you can just blop it in and it kind of works so oh, I just made a little cover for the old charge port because all the messy wiring comes through there all in all I think it is uh, it's not a bad it's not bad and this is just Rev A as well so and it kind of all worked right, I'll show you turn it on the only thing is, I it kind of flickers on the camera, but in, in real life it doesn't flicker. The only thing it does is does this weird kind of um, thing. If you want to, 
as you start scrolling around that kind of moves over to the side. I'm not really sure because I had the same issue with this. Uh, I really don't know. And then when you actually go to the thingy, it kind of goes out. But once you actually play in the game, it's perfectly fine. Uh, I've just used the actual um, ROM that you, that they use in the collection of games that they actually use in the uh, FX chip. I just basically copy the files um, and then just loaded them straight on. And you can still get access to the Arduino so you can upload new games or you can just upload test builds so you just test it. You can just have it connected to your to your laptop um, and it's quite nice. But yeah, all in all it's it's not um I think it's I think it's come out alright. I'm quite happy with it. I'm quite happy with it for once. <laughs> but yeah let's have another let's have a bit of a gameplay. Some of the uh, some of the racing ones oh yes is a good one. I use the same uh, dome headed buttons as well that the actual original um, SP uses so they actually just fit you don't have to they just have the little rubber bit underneath just as a um, I don't I don't know why it has that actually but it does because they're not like the old ones the old with the old carbon contact they are actually are so they're a bit clicky as you can hear but they're not they're not overly clicky but it just looks so nice with that big screen it kind of actually makes it enjoyable to to play Uh, this is like a, uh, I can't remember what the actual game it's taken from. But yeah, as usual, the uh, all the files, uh, the 3D print files, the KiCad files, everything would be in the in the blog post in the description below. So if you wanted to remake your own, you know, or you know, just take inspiration from it, do whatever you want with it. It's just um, all the schematics there for the different for the uh, if you are going to go down the same route as me with the transistor uh, to work. So yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.